So Ben here at the Guitar Center was kind enough to set me up in a back practice room with the uh, Tone Master Deluxe Reverb. And I grabbed a player series strat off the wall. Other than setting, you know, tuning it, no changes. So this is, you know, if I walked in here, wanted to come home with a guitar and amp for about $1,900, I could potentially go home with a whole new rig. Let's see. Let's see if I'm gonna be doing that. I don't think I'm gonna be getting this Strat, but so far it seems kind of nice of the neck's kind of tiny for me. I've got some good Strats. I got big necks, but we'll see how the amp is. I don't know how it's going to sound to this mic, but that reverb is much longer with much more clarity than you hear in any of the spring tanks made after about 1980. It's a longer decay than the old Gibbs Accutronics from the 60s and early 70s, but it has a really nice clarity to it. I can see why someone would play that and say, oh, I got to have this. <laughs> Let's see if it does that splat thing. I've got to wait for the reverb to die down so I can speak. It doesn't really have that splat thing. They haven't gotten that right. Though, given that this has the uh, Neo 12K, uh, it probably does not have the latest uh, software update, which is supposed to be a reverb improvement as well. But that's for a digital amp, that's a, a stellar reverb. I would never use it that high. But down here, where I'd use it most of the time, it's quite nice. It's still a little bit long. still hurts. Uh, notice I'm not using a pick. I, when trying out a new amp, especially one that's aimed towards the clean end of things, I, I like to use my fingers. I, I get a more sense, more of a sense of how it actually is behaving. Let's check out the other channel. Oh, 
I have to be honest with you, if a tube deluxe reverb came in and the normal channel was sounding and feeling like this and that attack was like that, I hope this translates to this little lav mic. I, my first thought would be there's some either a, a tube's bad in V1 or something's amiss in the cathode. It's uh, clamping down on that attack in a way that this channel should not, and this channel's not. So maybe they modeled this one better, figure more people spend time on it. And I'm really snapping those strings. That channel's got a little bit of that too. It's like there's a compressor in there. It's really like there's a compressor. Some of that might be the uh, Neo 12K if they really did closely model the ceramic 12K, the regular C12K, which does have that kind of artifact to the attack and is, uh, you know, people give me shit about saying it. It's a, it's a terrible sounding speaker. I know it's subjective. It just when every professional player in Memphis comes to my house and they hear the C12K versus almost anything else, the C12K goes in, in the bin. So not everyone will agree with me, but everyone who does this for a living so far who's played it in person and has heard the C12K versus almost anything else, prefers the almost anything else. So if I were gonna get a Tone Master, I, I would want the one with the Neo Cream Back, I think. That's a, um, I have not heard the Neo version, but the Cream Back, the, the regular Cream Back 65 or 75, is an infinitely better speaker than the C12K. And yeah, it's subjective, but my opinions are formed based on hearing a few thousand amps a year. How many amps a year do you spend a lot of time with and play? I'm just answer that honestly. If you if you can say, hey, I, I hear about 300 amps a year regularly, then maybe maybe we can agree to disagree. But if you've got three amps and you like the speakers in those three amps, I'm happy for you. But that's not a big basis of comparison. You might like something else better. Trust me. Yeah, I'm not I'm not feeling that normal channel at all. I'm hearing that difference right there. I mean, it doesn't matter. I could turn the, the amp volume up more and know, you know, see if, if it sounds at all like a crank deluxe, but it, it doesn't sound like a deluxe reverb round four. It's got a compression to it. And I don't think that, that C12K is probably helping it, the Neo 12K. Someone in the audience might not know because they might not know what you intended it to sound like. So to them, it's going to sound good. But if you're used to playing 
a tube deluxe reverb and you have certain right hand techniques built up over the years that take advantage of the way a tube deluxe reverb reacts, this is going to be fighting you. <laughs> to give us a quick tuning. And I'm not saying this to put anybody down, but if you're in a worship band or you're just playing rhythm in a band and you're you're kind of your parts tend to go or whatever, this might really suit your needs. But if you're the kind of guy who digs into the strings and pops and really, you know, whether you're making your, uh, your ugly guitar face when you do big bends, Sting's not there. That that it gets small when it should get big. And I know that some people are gonna think, oh, he's just so picky, he doesn't like anything. I came in here wanting to like this. The other weird thing to me about this Tone Master Deluxe Reverb, and I thought about it after doing that previous video, is yeah, it's 22 watts, just like a real deluxe reverb. The real Deluxe Reverb is 22 watts because it has two 6v6s and they didn't want to give it ginormous transformers, make it weigh a bunch. There is no reason on earth this cannot be 50 watts. It's an ice module output. It, it's fine if this had a 22 watt setting if you want it to be a straight Deluxe Reverb replacement, but think how cool this would be if it worked as promised, you know, I'm not, I'm not digging the attack on this thing, um, but you could also do 50 watts. You know, 24 pounds, doesn't take up a lot of space, you can throw it in, in, the, in the seat of your car, no, no big deal, and for almost any stage, 50 watts, or 40 watts, whatever you want to call it. Um, that, I think that's a big missed opportunity. You could still set it to the 22 watt setting for those who wanted straight DR replacement, but it just makes no sense to limit what this amp could be just because of what its copying was. And just remember, if you hear a demo of this and it's all... Ambient stuff, real soft attack, often with delay added. For some reason, almost everything on YouTube's got delay added to it. It sounds gorgeous. You know, that's, that's a beautiful sound. If I can play. Reverb adds a lot, and I'm barely picking anything. It's that's just a soft thing. It's really good for that, but as soon as you get that's where the difference is really clear to me. <laughs> 